Hello Rescue Squad, this is Twinkle here, bringing you another Fusion Fakemon video. This time, Fusion's My Girlfriend picked. This came from a Markiplier video because that's what she likes. It was a smash or pass with Pokemon Fusions. And she just sent me screenshots of some of the ones that she liked, and now I have to make Fusions of them. I'm not a fan of just doing pure Fusions where I just take the attributes of two Pokemon and push them together, so rather, I've taken a little bit more of a reconstructionist route. I will be distilling the Pokemon sort of down to their base concepts and then taking those parts and using them to make something new that will hopefully by the end be able to stand as its own Pokemon. And completely unintentionally, we are all outer space themed this time around. First fusion we have up is Fennekin plus Araquanid. Our uh, Mr. Market Pliers doesn't look too sure about this one, but I really like it. I think it's super cute, and it looks like a little alien astronaut fox, so that's the direction I'm gonna take this in. Looking at my page of sketches for this one, most of the experimentation was centered around the head and face region, the presence or absence of these little buggy fangs, extra eyes, those compound lenses that insects have, and little UFO doodle. Please do not mind the Husseween Zoronk. I... It was a gag sketch for my last video. Definitely doing pretty chibi starter-esque proportions. I had to mess around with the head and bubble shape quite a bit to get them where I like them, and also the size of the bubble. I needed it to encompass the entire head, without being too large. I ultimately went up going with almond-shaped, mischievous-looking eyes, similar to in the original screenshot, rather than the more circular eyes in my sketch. I just thought it looked nicer that way. I also struggled quite a bit with getting the general head shape how I liked it. I decided to go for kind of an exaggerated crescent shape for the top of the head, which I think is very fitting for the outer space theme. Getting the legs to look right was kind of a hassle. As you go to smaller and smaller bodies with this sort of pixel art style, it actually gets pretty tricky to get posing and details to transfer the way you would like. I also ended up making the tail much more round. It's kind of meant to resemble an air tank or something. The bubble helmet was a fun and interesting challenge, getting it to look translucent and like it's there without obscuring the details of the face too much. I had to do quite a few layers of shading on both the bubble and the rest of the face, but I really liked the way it ultimately turned out. I also went back and ended up adding ear tufts like Fennekin has, but much smaller. I thought there was enough going on with the face that I didn't feel compelled to add much extra detailing to the torso or legs. I experimented with a number of different colors for the eyes, but settled on this purple. I think it's a nice alien looking color. It is complete. At long last, we have Kitstar, the Explorer Pokemon. This Pokemon is believed to be from outer space. The bubble surrounding its head contains a mixture of gases from its home planet, enabling it to explore worlds with unfavorable atmospheres. It is a common companion and helper for astronauts. Kitstar has been found aboard crashed UFOs. It is unknown if it piloted these crafts or if it was brought along by another creature. Kitstar become unhappy when confined to the planet's surface for too long. It gazes at the stars late into the night and wails in despair, for it longs to be among them. That last bit of the Pokedex entry, I took a little bit of inspiration from Bagon wanting to fly so badly. Kitstar is a bug psychic type, since one of its main themes is being adaptable to nearly any type of planet. Bug is fitting because bugs are adaptable to a wide variety of environments. It's also psychic type, because a common trope for aliens is that they are 
highly cognitively advanced to the point of having psychic powers and communicating telepathically, I believe Kitstar would probably have some degree of telepathy. Its abilities are trace or analytic with adaptability as a hidden ability. It's quite small, height and weight being within starter ranges. Same with stats. Perhaps this is a starter Pokemon somewhere on a world far away from here. Okay, on to the next one. We have Cresselia plus Salazzle. Could anyone who watches Mr. Marketplier tell me why he always looks like he's just seen something horrible? <laughs> it's probably because he has. I am certainly excited for this one because it is my first Fakemon design based on tarot cards. Specifically, I am basing her on number two of the Major Arcana, the High Priestess. This was a complicated design process, as such I have quite a few more sketches than usual. I kind of took Salazzle's body shape and just started incorporating moon and crescent shapes. I kind of took this triple goddess crown thing straight from the High Priestess. Next page, messing with some poses. I have done an experimental little sketch for a potential male version based on the Hierophant. I don't mind the little face. I think the real takeaway here is that my sketch pages are always full of cursed things because I can't stay focused. <laughs> And lastly, I have some more pose experimentation. One with her defensively guarding herself with her crescent moon tails, which I think would be really cool to experiment with later. This pose with her kind of spreading her arms out, bursting forth from her cloak, is what ended up being the basis for the final sprite. So yes, I chose to base Krelzar on the High Priestess. I am actually much more of an old-school Italian tradition Tarot de Marseille type of cultist. I am not that big a fan of the Rider Waite Smith deck, but the trumps of the Rider Waite Smith deck just have more recognizable symbolism that I can pull upon to flesh out designs like this, so that's what I ended up basing it on. I have incorporated influence from a couple of different lizards here. First, the crested gecko, but I have replaced the crests on the eyebrows with these giant crescent moon shapes. Secondly, the frilled lizard that has those crazy neck frill things going on, but I have taken those neck frills and stretched them out into the cloak slash robe covering this lizard priestess's body. I have a lot of trouble here getting this pose with the line art to look the way that I like. The face in particular, this is just not a comfortable angle at all to draw a creature with these sorts of big eyes from. I realize about halfway through doing the line art that I love and adore the way that the cloak looks, but absolutely hate the pose and angle, so I erase most of it and start sketching again. This second pose I think is far stronger and exudes way more personality and gives way more of an indication of how this Pokemon may behave in battle. Also, I think this change of pose has reduced the odds of running into a Generation 4 Registeel situation from low to zero. Uh, if you know, you know. I generally try to avoid these front-facing poses when I can. It just feels like taking the easy way doing this, and they're not really that expressive for the most part, but it works here. It's the only way to really get across the shape of the head and eyes, plus on the Rider Waite Smith High Priestess, she sits directly facing the viewer, so it works here. For colors here, I know that gold is generally more of a god slash divine masculine slash sun color, but, but I really wanted to get that classic blue and yellow that Rider Waite Smith deck is so well known for. It's just a fantastic color combo. It looks so clean, so good. Here we have Krelzar, the cleric Pokemon. 
This is the female version. Female Krellzar embodies the energy of the moon. Its behavior and disposition change with moon cycles. Its power is greatest during the full moon, at which time it fiercely guards its territory. It hides in caves to rest and avoid predators when it is weakest during the new moon. It behaves erratically during eclipses. Female Krelzar is a water fairy type. Water because that is the element most associated with both the moon and the high priestess. And fairy because fairies tend to get associated with the moon and with outer space in Pokemon looking at Clefable and the move Moonblast. For abilities, she has Shed Skin or Trace with own tempo as a hidden ability. Stat-wise, I put her on par with Cresselia and other weaker legendary Pokemon with a total of 580, mostly distributed into speed and special attack. For the shiny version, I have brought in Silver of the Goddess for Krelzar's crest and tails to evoke a more special and mystical feeling. She is initiated on an even deeper level than the rest of her brethren. Oops, one more last minute entry here. It's not just a delirious idea from my disorderly sketchbook. Male Krelzar based on the Hierophant is now real. Once again, mostly based on the Rider Waite Smith interpretation of the card. I tried something a little different here. Instead of screen recording to get my time lapse footage, I just used the built in time lapse footage that Fire Alpaca has. I think I like this a lot better. It's much easier to work with and it doesn't create huge files that threaten the sanctity of my very hard drive. So I start by using female Krelzar's line art as the base of this to keep the two character sprites around the same size. I put him in a lower down kneeling position, sort of to imply prayer and reverence. Change the shape of the tail to be solar rather than lunar. I have quite a bit of trouble getting the arms and hands to look right. My initial idea is to have them meeting together in the middle as if he's saying a little prayer or incantation, but it doesn't quite look right. So I end up scrapping that idea and instead have his arms crossed, kind of just holding his cloak closed. It helps emphasize how timid and reserved the male of the Krelzar species are. I also try adding these little spikes to his chin like a bearded dragon would have to also play into the Sunray theme, but I just don't really love the way that it looks and neither does my girlfriend. The tail here for sure is a bit of a bear. I add some soft shading to try to imply a narrower tail shape underneath the fan that the fan kind of protrudes outward from. I don't know how well that really worked, but it I still think it looks okay. It's not my favorite feature of the design. I also go back and soften the shading around the face because at the particular angle in lighting, I thought it looked like he had a beard and I just don't want my guy to have a beard, okay? Here we go. Krelzar, male version, the cleric Pokemon. Male Krelzar value order and hierarchy. They usually operate in small groups with a designated leader. While effective as teams, they are known to be timid and docile when alone. A frightened male will spread out its fan-shaped tail to appear larger or hide behind it. Male Krelzar revere the sun basking in its light daily as a source of power. For type, we have ground fire. Ground as the primary because earth is the element most associated with the Hierophant. Fire because obviously the sun. It would be very strange for a design like this to not be fire type at all. For abilities, we have shed skin or solar power. Solar power obviously because it says right in the decks that the little guy gets his power from the sun. As a hidden ability, we have Magic Guard. Male Krelzar is slightly smaller and lighter than his female counterpart. For stats, he has the same base stat total of 580, but much more tailored toward being defensive. 
For the shiny, once again, I have switched his crest and tail to the same silver as shiny Krelzar female in order to keep them cohesively united. You know, they're, they're a pair. They, they, they love each other. They need each other. <laughs> Absolutely looks like I have a crazy eyelid going on. Nice. <laughs> Baby, I'm having a brain fart. <laughs>